is our spacecraft that we envision that will take us from Earth to the moon. Uh, we'll, put, we'll strap ourselves on top of a, a Falcon 9 launch vehicle um, and we'll get into a low Earth orbit. Uh, that's where all the satellites hang out. At that time, the, the Falcon 9 will fire a second engine and it'll launch us into what's called a translunar injection. Uh, and that's basically a straight line path right to the moon. So that's where we come in. That's where, that's where CMU and Astrobotic pick up the reins of the mission. And we can go right over there and check out the rover. So the rovers are over here somewhere. Oh, there we go. We come off the launch vehicle and then, and then the rover sets down on the, on the surface. Uh, the rover travels about five centimeters per second, so it's a nice, slow, predictable uh, speed for us. Uh, the moon's surface is very, very hot uh, when the sun's out. When the sun is directly overhead, the moon's surface is 120 degrees Celsius, and uh, that's about 250 degrees Fahrenheit above boiling. Uh, so it, in order to stay cool on the moon's surface, there's a large white radiator, and that's what that white, ra white uh, surface is on there. Works just like wearing a white t-shirt in the desert keeps the robot cool and keeps the electronics cool inside. Uh, there's no atmosphere on the moon, so traditional uh, uh, electronics, just like the camera we're filming with today, would actually fry and melt right on the moon's surface. It'll do a 500 meter traverse and that'll win the Google Lunar X Prize. And after that, we'll, we'll uh, traverse a few more kilometers and then we'll come along to the uh, Apollo 11 landing site. And we'll come up and, and see it in the distance, and it'll get bigger and bigger and bigger, and the, the history will just come to life. Um, it's, it's just going to be an incredible historic event. Uh, we're going to be capturing everything in 3D HD video and streaming it all back uh, live to Earth. Our rover will be taking 3D video as it explores. And so either with uh, anaglyph glasses like this or with the polarized glasses uh, that you get in the movie theaters, you'll be able to see with the clarity that the Apollo astronauts saw the lunar surface. And then when you look at it in 3D, the sense of depth, and the sense that this is a completely different world because if you look at the horizon, it doesn't fade away. There's no atmospheric haze. It just continues in complete crispness all the way to the edge of your vision. So it's a very different experience seeing the moon in 3D than seeing the Earth in 3D. Right now it's just trying to hold a position, so if we disturb it, it will try and come back. This is the platform of the lander, the robot's sitting here, and this is reading the surface of the moon down here, and then reading all the attitudes as this thing floats down to the surface of the moon to keep it level. There would be a big main thruster sitting right below here. Uh, and that controls your descent rate. We might have a camera looking down at the moon that tracks uh, maybe some craters and determines position um, based on what it sees. We'd also have a star tracker that's looking up at the sky uh, and it determines based on the relative position of the stars what its orientation is. What's interesting over here, just a second. Here's a lander, which is called the Moon Arc, right? And see, what happens is once the rover leaves that, this becomes our architecture, our art museum. It's extraterrestrial art, right? <laughs> We've, it's never been done before. We've never seen anything like it. NASA doesn't spend time doing, doing art on the moon. And uh, this could be a first for all mankind.